Um, <coughs> when it comes to uh, one aspect of the parsha, we have a carbon toda, very special carbon. We mentioned yesterday a little bit about it. A toda is a carbon, is a, what we call a thanksgiving offering. That's what a carbon toda is. The Gemara learns that the toda offering is compared to um, the offering that we have when we bench gomel. The Gemara has in, the Gemara in Brachos explains that in Tehillim Kuf Zayin that there are four types of people that have to give thanks to Hashem, and those are the four types of people that today. When they bench Gomel, it's for one of those four reasons. So the Gemara learns uh, the four reasons of someone who survived a desert journey or other potentially hazard, hazard, hazardous journey, someone who was in prison, someone who had serious illness, or someone who was going over the sea. Any of those places or any of those experiences would be considered dangerous experiences. Therefore, from the, those Sukkim and Tehillim, which explain each one of those scenarios, so therefore we learn that the person has to give a thanksgiving offering. They have to give a toda offering. The toda is basically from the shlamim categories, which is a peace offering. The toda offering is something that's eaten for a day and a night. A shlamim, which is a general peace offering, is eaten for two days and a night. The only difference is, one major distinction is that the toda is accompanied with 40 loaves. 30 of those loaves are going to be chametz, and 10 of those loaves are going to be... Uh, excuse me, 30 of those loaves are going to be matzah, and 10 of those loaves are actually going to be chametz. So it first explains the distinction of why do we have these loaves. And this is an important lesson, certainly for us, of chametz and matzah and Pesach. Notice in this particular carbon, you're actually offering both. So he explains that <coughs> the 11 loaves, the chametz loaves, actually represent, um, they represent freedom, because it's unrestrained, it continues to grow, it can rise, and, and the like. That's what the chametz loaves represent. Matzah, on the other hand, doesn't necessarily represent freedom, but it actually represents well-being, which means food, sustenance, basic necessities of life. Even though when we eat matzah, we describe it as freedom. It says at first, really, when you look at chametz, chametz represents unrestrained freedom, something that has an opportunity to continue to grow and the like. In the case of this particular carbon, the toda offering, chametz represents unrestrained, whereas matzah, which is obviously restrained, but it actually represents the general well-being that a person has in their own life. So what he explains is that the combination of these things that when a person goes through difficulty and they need to be thankful to Hashem, the way it works is that you have to have both of these things. One thing is you feel the sense of freedom, you feel the sense of being unrestrained, you're in prison, you were sick, and now you feel unrestrained, so therefore you have this, these loaves that symbolize this. At the same time, he recognizes that his basic sustenance, his basic ability to live, and all the things that he has, is really what he owes to Hashem. He owes all of this to God, his food, his well-being, he owes this to God, and therefore he rededicates all of this to Hashem, and that is what the matzah represents. So on the one hand, he shows his unrestrained freedom. On the other hand, he's rededicating himself over to Hashem. And this is what the representation of Matzah is about. Rededicating ourselves over to Hashem.